Welcome to Butcher Bay. Butcher Bay is probably one of my favorite video games. It's definitely my favorite stealth game. It was made by Starbreeze, and it's kind of a miracle the game turned out as good as it did. During development, the studio was kind of running out of money, so the team had to work somewhere else just to keep from going crazy. Despite this, I think the game turned out great. So how do you get the game? It's not on Steam anymore, and neither is the remaster that came with Assault on Dark Athena. You can always get a disc copy of it for PC or Xbox, or you can find a secret free copy somewhere else. The game was originally made for the Xbox, but it was ported to PC and added a few new things, like an extra segment where you get to steal a riot guard, some more ciggies to grab, and developer commentary. Neat. With that out of the way, time to start the game. The game starts with Riddick being stalked by some yeti looking creature. After killing it, a voice asks how he really got his eye shine. This makes him remember his time at Butcher Bay, a supermax security prison. The rest of the game follows Riddick's increasingly elaborate antics in order to break out. Not much more to it other than that, without going into spoilers, so let's talk graphics. On a technical level, this game still holds up with titles like Half-Life 2. Starbreeze used normal mapping to help the textures really stand out. The faces also mostly look good too, although some are definitely more ghoul-like than others. This place looks grimy. There's prison graffiti all over the walls, mostly everything is covered in various levels of dirt. Basically everything looks decrepit or run down. This has changed up in the third act, but by and large does not look like a good place. And it's not much better in the guards' quarters either. Dynamic lighting adds to the atmosphere with flickering lights. The game also uses stencil shadows and self-shadowing, the latter of which can sometimes look good on faces, but more often than not just looks off or jagged. Aside from the usual physics jank that can happen, there was also a segment where I guess bullet objects just failed to appear and were replaced by white squares. The game also has a pretty looking skybox in a couple sections if you're into that. To help add to the feeling that everyone hates life here, there's some great voice acting. I love the voice acting in this game. Most of the guards are very vocal about wanting to kill you. It makes me fear. Anyone not screaming sounds like they're just trying to make the most of living in a shithole. In the last 10 days, four inmates hang themselves on my watch. Compared to butchers, the end of a rope don't look so bad. Riddick himself doesn't talk much, and it's mostly just low growls from Diesel, but he has some standout moments. The sound effects are also great, though not all of them are pleasant. The guns are appropriately loud, hand-to-hand -hand combat sounds meaty, and everything sounds more or less like you would expect it to. Musically, there's not much to speak of, but what's there doesn't sound bad or anything. When you're in gen pop, most of the music is reduced to some ambience that blends in with the distant sounds of prisoners getting maimed. When you're stealthing, the music is taken over by drums and sounds tense enough. Combat music isn't that varied, but it does set the tone nicely. Not much more to speak of, other than the calm track that plays at certain points. It does sound nice, and it can be a relaxing break from the rest of the game. So the game looks and sounds good, but what is gameplay like? There's two parts to the game, times where you have guns, and times where you don't. When you don't have a gun, the game incentivizes being sneaky by having the guards kill you in seconds if you're spotted. Sure, you can pick off guards with backstabs and neck snaps if you're sneaky enough, but for the most part, it's all about using the shadows. Thanks to the dynamic lighting and stencil shadows, it's pretty intuitive where you can hide and jump people to give them a quick chiropractic session. 
In these parts of the game, you cannot win a multi-guard fight. You have options in a one-on-one, -on -one, sure, but if that guy's got backup, you're becoming the janitor's overtime work. So you want to sneak and kill guards if you get the chance. Unless they're out of the way or surrounded by backup, there's really no reason not to eliminate guards. They'll just make sneaking harder for you if you don't kill them. I should mention that they're not really that much of a threat anyway. Guards have that problem where if you're in the dark, you may as well not exist. It is very easy to get away with killing multiple guards even without a gun in a dark area. Unless they see you in light, you're not real. As far as I can tell, they don't even have audio detection. I was playing on hard, and I don't think there was more than a couple of times where I had trouble with the stealth section. If they spot you, it's over, but there are sections where they will struggle to spot you at all. If you're not sneaking around, then you're probably going to get in a melee of some kind. Most of the improvised weapons are fine, but the real strategy is the right hook left hook combo. It turns you into a meat grinder and can be used to stunlock most enemies in a submission. If they stop getting stunlocked, then you only need to step back, let them walk forward a bit, and then clean them out. There's also a parry system I don't fully understand. The way I think it works is that if you attack right when they attack and their health is low enough, you kill them instantly. This is much easier to do when someone has a gun, and they can be killed at any health stage like this. The other part of the game is when you have guns. You usually keep the ability to use guns until the next act, so stealth is far less mandatory until then. It does become easier to stealth as you get guns however, as you gain the ability to shoot out nearly every light. So if you want to pop the lights and then break everyone's necks, you can. Gun combat is a bit more of a challenge than sneaking around, but the AI isn't exactly the brightest at times. You seen him? Nah, I just heard what he looks like. Kinda like that guy. Right. Okay. On the flip side, there are times during combat sections where if you're not prepared, you will get killed by some bullshit ambush. The guns themselves are fun to use. There's not a ton to pick from, but the guns you can use feel great. The assault rifle is beefy and precise, the shotgun is good for laying out enemies that aren't human, and the pistol is a decent backup slash utility weapon. There's also a couple less common weapons, like the trank gun, which you can get by buying it off a prisoner and then immediately requesting a refund. I knew you would do. There's also a proto rifle, which is like the auto rifle but somehow more dangerous. A minigun which slows you down, and grenades. Though I never use these more than a couple times a playthrough. Aside from combat, the rest of the game will be spent trying to get out of Butcher Bay. The main quest line is usually just Riddick trying to find a way to break out, but there are some side quests you can do. These tasks are usually killing people, threatening to kill people, almost killing people, and collecting moths. Moths can be used to make heroin least cigarettes, which is the only way most people will be escaping the prison. Smoke enough of them, and they can be used to escape life as well. Speaking of smoking, the game also has collectible cigarette packs strewn about. These can be found in hidden areas, and most of the aforementioned side quest people will pay you in cancer sticks. Siggy's will unlock extras the first time you find some, and these can range from the Chronicles of Riddick movie stills to beta footage of the game. They're worth collecting just for the beta footage, and they all have some pretty good warning labels. There is a currency called UDs which can also be found and given to you, but I only usually use them to buy more cigarettes and the occasional shiv. It's hard to run out of money in this game unless you go out of your way to spend it all. Most of the time you find all the equipment you need on the people you kill, so there's not much point in spending money anyway. The game uses a health system similar to Mass Effect 3. Health is segmented into cubes that deplete when you take damage. These cubes will regenerate if you're not taking damage and you're standing still, but if they're completely depleted, they're gone. The only way to get these cubes back is to use a nanomed plus health station, and these are scattered throughout the prison. These operate by jamming two big ass needles into your jugular vein and pumping you full of nano juice. The machine will give you up to four squares worth of nano juice, and if you want more healing, you're gonna need to recharge it with a nanomed plus module. There are a limited number of these capsules, and only some enemies drop them when you kill them. I didn't run out of these capsules when I played, but you can run out, so be careful. Riddick starts out with 4 health squares, and this can be upgraded later on using larger nanomed stations. Each station will completely heal you and give you an extra square of health. Instead of jabbing 2 needles into your jugular vein, this machine instead stabs 3 very large needles into your heart. Now's a good time to mention that these machines aren't designed to limit pain, they're designed to heal wounds. As for the story, there's not a lot to talk about. None of the main characters really change, and the plot is pretty inconsequential to the rest of the franchise. That said, there are a few spoilers for the rest of the franchise, so if you really do care, skip ahead to the time on the screen.
After the opening cutscene, Riddick flashes back to his Escape from Butcher Bay TM, which he escaped from before the events of Pitch Black, the first movie in the Riddick franchise. A character named Johns took him there in hopes of getting a sizable bounty on him. He gets one look at you, Riddick, and all is forgiven. And I bank your bounty plus 50. Plus 50? Now come on, Johns. Greed is an ugly thing. Riddick is less than optimistic about his chances. Today, Johns, you get fucked. After waking up from his tutorial dream, Johns leads Riddick off the ship and meets the warden, Hoxie. After a brief exchange, Abbott leads Riddick into his new holding cell. Hey, what are you bringing to us? Name's Riddick. Thinks his shit don't stink. The Riddick? Get the fuck back to your cell, Jack. Hey, Riddick. After a quick chemical bath, Riddick wastes no time in trying to find a way to escape. This is how the majority of the plot will play out. Riddick gets put in a new part of the prison, then he tries to find a way out and usually kills a lot of people along the way. In the first area, there's some side quests you can do, but the main goal is to get out through the pit, which allegedly has an exit to the guards' quarters. You talk to a guy named Haley, and he says he's willing to help, but he wants you to take care of this guy named Rust. Rust is both Abbott's snitch and the leader of the Aquila gang. Why nobody has shanked him in his sleep for being a snitch yet, I don't know. After using some Rust 911, Haley tells you to talk to a guard to let you into the hospital. From here, you get a gun so you won't immediately get killed trying to get to the pit. Rock solid machinery and no childproof programs. This is not the coder's dream. And then... It ain't the fall that gets you. So you've made it to the pit. The problem is that your shotgun's battery is running out, and there are others living down there. After fighting your way through the dwellers, a man named Pope Joe rescues you. He offers to stitch your arm up in exchange for you getting his radio back from the dwellers. He also tries to tell Riddick about a prophecy, and Riddick doesn't give a shit. He spoke to me about you, Riddick. But how do I know you're not a simple imposter? Can you stitch me or not? Riddick gets the radio, and Joe stitches his arm back up. After this, that voice from earlier brain blasts Riddick and gives him night vision. This basically introduces space magic into the Riddick franchise. This does a couple of things I don't like. First, it takes away from the grounded, more hard sci-fi nature of the franchise. In the first movie, there wasn't some sort of necromancy enemy. Riddick was just trying to survive the wildlife. In the sequel, there are air elementals and half-dead soldiers or whatever they were called. The second thing this does is change the reason why Riddick's eyes are shined. In Pitch Black, Riddick explains that his eyes were shined so he could have an easier time surviving. In this, it was just because some voice told him it was his destiny or something. You finally make it into Pigsville. From here, you can go into the locker room and disguise yourself as one of the guards. Unless you're like child me and you don't explore anywhere. Pigsville is... What the fuck you need to? Fuck off! Unwelcoming. Everything here is about what you would expect for a prison like this. While we're here though, I want to point out some of the NPC names. Some of the prisoners had some pretty outlandish nicknames, but some of the guards have some too. Once you run into a guard named Soup, there's no going back. What are you looking at? I don't want no trouble. Anyways, from here you go up to Abbott's apartment and you nearly kill him, but John stops you. John's tries to break you out, but you're stopped by Hoxie's men. Hoxie expresses mild disappointment in you and then sends you down to the mines. This would have been a great place for Riddick to get his eye shine since it's basically the same kind of place Riddick said he got his eye shine. But I digress. Unlike some of the other slams I've been to, Butcher Bay had a detached deficiency. They could contain the cons, but could never control them. So inside the bay walls was chaos, desperation, madness, and death. Welcome to the mines. The guards are looking for any excuse they can get to kill you, so you have to be careful down here. In 
order to get out of the mines, you have to talk to Jagger Valance, some dude who hangs out in the lower areas. In order to get to Jagger, you have to get to Abbott. In order to get to Abbott, you have to either get caught with drugs or win the guard-sponsored fight club. Of course, real gamers pick the genocide route. The mines are where the game really opens up for me. There's more characters down here, and most of them are at least interesting to listen to. I use freelancers. I don't want to have any of the gangs involved. Hurts the profit. Why you ask? You want to collect for me? Me? I'm too weak. You wouldn't get two cents back from me. I'd get slapped around by some bitch and returned in a crate or something. <laughs> I get the picture. Anyway, after killing half the prison population, you finally get to meet Abbott again. You kill him and take his card, and eventually work your way down to Jagger Valance in the mines. Jagger needs you to pick up a bomb from a guy named Jupiter as part of his plan to break out. On the way there, you steal a light riot guard, which is the PC port exclusive level I talked about earlier. You eventually get to Jupiter and plant a bomb inside this cave filled with flammable gas. This doesn't stop Riddick from lighting a match. What's hell without a little fire? After planting the bomb, the guards catch you and prepare to put you back in your cell. But then the bomb explodes. And then... This is Central Command. We detected a large explosion at your location. Any Xeno activity? No. Nothing. Good. Hope it stays that way. Just a minute. There's been a cave in here! Welcome to the caves. By planting that bomb, you've just started a Xeno invasion. This is the most combat intensive part of the game. You have to fight your way through guards and Xenos while they're both fighting each other. Eventually, after killing a few big enemies and a lot of smaller enemies, you finally make it to the spaceport. Jagger and Riddick nearly make it out, but Jonth catches them. More than 22% after this. Now come on, let's go. <laughs> Wait, Riddick! Whoa, whoa, whoa! No time like the present, Johns. Jagger gets shot a bunch by the guards, and now you're back to square one. Hoxie is now very disappointed in you, and instead of killing you, decides to put you in cryo sleep. <laughs> Your mandatory two minutes of daily exercise begins now. According to law number 88432-337B, this is your right as a guild prisoner and your only right. A proposition to abolish law number 88432-337B is currently pending. After waking up to some white walls, Riddick wastes no time in his escape attempt. You fight your way through the cryosleep pyramids and eventually make your way to an empty heavy guard. After shooting up the corporate offices, Johns bails you out. You stop by Hoxie's office to give him a quick goodbye, Johns and Riddick escape, and roll credits. And that's basically it. There's an after credits scene, but it's not really worth talking about. So that's Butcher Bay. It's a bit too short, it's a bit too easy, but I love this game. It's got a great atmosphere, great voice acting, the combat's good enough to keep you engaged for your entire playthrough. The story isn't anything special, but you don't play this for the story. You play this so you can sneak attack a guy while he's looking at you. I highly recommend you give this game a try if you can find a copy. Any version is good, but get the PC version if you can. And that's it. Up next I might be trying to do a video for Halloween. It's probably going to be after Halloween, but we'll see. If you have any suggestions for games I should try, feel free to leave a comment. If I can get it running, I'll add it to a backlog of games to review or something. If you've made it this far, thanks for watching. Analyze your mind like that guy Sigmund Floyd. Sigmund who? Sigmund Floyd, man. He was this psycho professor from a long time ago or whatever, and uh, had this idea that all guys want to screw their mom or something like that. And, uh, also, he discovered the mind and uh, other stuff. Like, uh, <laughs> the mind? Yeah, the mind. You know what? Shut the hell up, okay? I'm trying to explain. Relax. Sorry, Holmes. <laughs>